Jim Ripsuwa, I am Sreipal, I'm the Country Director of Healthcare Volunteers International in Cambodia. We are located inside the National Pediatric Hospital. We do a project to support the hospital, staff, and medical students. We are partner with National Pediatric Hospital to build a brand new medical library. Now we just finished renovate two conference rooms, a practical skill room, and an auditorium. Now I would like to show you what we have done so far. This is the e-medical library and we open it every day, Monday to Sunday. And um, the purpose why we build the e-medical library is to allow students and medical staff to do their research, group study, and especially uh, we would like to promote the evidence-based med medical because we believe that evidence-based medical will be the strong drive to promote the healthcare in Cambodia. The library equipped with 16 computer and high-speed internet. We also have a computer for students to log in and also a tape to assist students to log in when they come to the library. There's, as you can see, we have several students coming for their research and group study, and especially the medical library is open for everyone. People who come to the library are required to log in with their Gmail account, and we also have libraries to assist the students to create Gmail account if they don't have. This is our modern conference room and it can accommodate 45 persons. It's equipped with 70 inches of TV and if we can watch YouTube, we can watch video and we also equipped with a big refrigerator where the student can bring their food or can bring their dreams while they're watching the video or they study group together. This is the auditorium. It can accommodate 170 maximum and the guy is doing the job for tomorrow national training. This auditorium is for national training, for medical meeting for, and also for hospital meeting. This is our convent room 3. It can accommodate 50 students. This convent is used for medical study, group study and it equipped with 70 inches of TV for showing the video so the student can learn by watching. And we are preparing to donate 10,000 pieces of suture to the hospital. Uh, so my name is Frank Duggan. I'm one of the founders of uh, Healthcare Volunteers International. And uh, we're doing a short video presentation to show you the new medical library that we've uh, built at the National Pediatric Hospital in Nong Phan, Cambodia. The, the hospital is very centrally located and we've spent um, a couple months here um, signing an agreement with the hospital in September. Uh, at that point in time we built the first stage of the library which consisted of a computer lab and a conference room. Um, this past 10 days we expanded and uh, completed the renovation of a large auditorium that holds approximately 170 people with audiovisual capabilities um, as well as a second conference room uh, with 60 person capability and uh, the current room that we're in right now which is a uh, has been designed as a training facility. Our hopes are to begin training American Heart Association and American College of Surgeons, um, advanced trauma life support um, and cardiac life support on both the basic and adult and pediatric advanced level um, starting sometime in the spring of 2015. And so this room will be set up with mannequins and equipment uh, to achieve that purpose. We um, are also going to be doing other types of training. Uh, we've begun a suture training program here where we're teaching the medical students and residents how to um, perform surgical knots and, and, and do uh, various suturing techniques. So if you, you know, to turn around here, the closets are a little bit empty right now, but what we're going to be doing, you can see here, we've got uh, a bunch of suture and I believe it's very soju so you uh, in the, the room next door, we're, we're laying out, we had a donation of approximately 10,000 uh, packs of suture, some of which we're going to be using for training purposes and some of which we'll be using for uh, teaching purposes here. Um, and we're going to be doing stuff like uh, you know, providing equipment that the students can 
you know, review themselves like a cricothorotomy kit. They could watch a video and then actually lay their hands on, on a training kit that they could take apart and, and be able to get a sense of what that is, you know, before they actually were doing it on a real patient. Uh, same thing like a suture, you know, for a central line, um, intubation. Uh, we have cervical collars we're going to be donating to the hospital, but also showing, you know, the students how to use those and the staff how to use those as well. Behind us here, you can see there's a bunch of suture, and these are our training kits and suture boards that we use for teaching the students how to tie knots and how to use instrument ties and, and do various techniques for suture training. Um, one of the things that we found advantageous from a training standpoint when we do this is that when we combine um, such things like video, um, it enables us to um, decrease the ratio of the trainer to trainees, um, particularly with stuff that's you know kind of finer detail like suturing, where it's difficult to see um, someone doing that um, when you're standing around. So it limits the number of people who could actually be involved, you know, um, with each instructor. We found that when we use video, and what we're compiling right now is 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 a bookmark um, on our web browser, uh, which is edu.kh at hcbi.org. We also have one of those for the other countries that we operate in, and one global one. And what we're doing is we're vetting video um, and educational material um, so that students can come to our site and, and be able to reliably obtain some information which we think is useful. So, for example, when we're teaching our suture class, we use an excellent video which puts together by um, Duke University's plastic surgery department. It's a fantastic video that goes over surgical technique and allowing the students to be able to watch up close um, on a large video screen what is taking place manually um, with the various suture techniques and then taking a break and allowing them to practice on the boards which we've designed for practice uh, enables the students to uh, be able to acquire uh, those skills, I think, in a, in a more rapid fashion. It allows the educator or the trainer uh, to be able to teach a larger group of people at the same time. Um, so we're finding that one or two people uh, with a couple of assistants, um, you know, during the part while the students are actually practicing, is allowed to do maybe 30 or 40 students at the same time. And I think historically, if you're trying to do that, you probably could teach three or four people at the same time, each instructor, and, and so that ratio, I think, uh, improves the ability to teach more people. Um, so this is basically our room. Um, we are, you know, in the process of uh, acquiring mannequins and, and other uh, various equipment that can be used for training purposes here. And again, our goal is to hopefully, within the next three to four months, initiate a training program here. The first really permanent one in Cambodia for the American Heart Association uh, for advanced life support uh, for adult and children, as well as basic life support. And our goal would be to, to have, within the first six months of next year, every doctor and nurse at the hospital at least certified in basic life support. And we think that that's a, a, a strong commitment to education and strong commitment to training uh, for this facility that's going to have a strong impact on patient care.